famous secrets, the mystery behind cryptos. I'm your host, Chris Craig. Now, art has been around for hundreds of years. People have used it to continue tradition and express emotion. Now, people have also been hiding secrets for centuries. However, artists can hide their secrets in more creative ways than others. They can hide them in their art. In this special program, we'll go deep into the mysteries behind cryptos. Cryptology is the study of ways of securing communication by encrypting and decrypting messages with certain keys. Cryptography is the study of enciphering and deciphering messages through known keys. The need for ciphers to encrypt messages has always existed. Ciphers have been used in wars, terrorist plots, and today are used in computers. The most famous piece of art that uses cryptography is still unsolved after more than two decades. This piece is known as Cryptos. Cryptos is the Greek word for hidden. Cryptos was created by Jim Sanborn, who was hired by the CIA to create a piece of artwork for the United States CIA headquarters in McLean, Virginia. This sculpture, dedicated to the CIA in November of 1990, is 12 feet high, consisting of four copper plates, granite, and wood. On each copper plate, letters and other characters are cut out. The letters on each plate are enciphered in a different way, making the entire secret message difficult to uncover. To learn more about the story of Kryptos, we interviewed a dedicated fan that has been working to break Kryptos for six years now. Hi, my name's Frank Dobbs. Uh, I've been studying Kryptos for six years now, and uh, I've been working on K4. I've been down to the CIA eight times. Um, to look at the sculpture itself. Uh, it's made of four copper plates, um, each with its own cipher. Um, there are 1,800 total characters, and 97 are on K4. Now, since it's the shortest one, it's actually the hardest one to break. The four parts of Cryptos have been given short names, making it easier for the code-breaking community to distinguish what part they are talking about. K1 refers to the first part, K2 is the second, K3 is the third, and K4 is the last and unsolved part. Jim Sandboard had never used cryptography before he made cryptos. He got help making the cipher for cryptos from the chairman of the CIA's cryptographic center at the time, Ed Scheidt. K1 and K2 were both enciphered using a polyalphabetic substitution cipher, known as a visionaire cipher. K3 was enciphered using a column transposition cipher. K4 is still unknown. Hi. Ready to order? Amazing. He's, he's a second. You move. So I'm sorry. Big win today. Thanks, Steve. Works every time. We'll have that. Come to Applebee's today for new sizzling entrees starting at $8.99. Try the spicy Asian shrimp, steak and cheese, or chicken with queso blanco from only $8.99. Fresh flavor never sounded so good. Only at Applebee's. Now open till midnight or later. Hello, my name is Ross Sanford. I study cryptology at MIT. The credit for being the first person to decipher the first three parts of cryptos is given to James Gillagly. In 1999, Gillagly announced his solutions to the th first three parts as well as how he broke the ciphers. However, like most major breakthroughs, many people claimed they had done it first. After Gilligly announced his solutions, David Stein, a member of the CIA, claimed that he had solved the same three parts a year earlier. Also, members of the National Security Agency claimed they had solved those three parts in 1992 through the use of computers. Though, because he was the first one to announce the solutions publicly, Gilligly is given the most credit for the solutions. The first two parts were enciphered using a visionaire cipher, which is a polyalphabetic substitution cipher. Here we have the unreadable cipher text from K1. The plain text is the actual readable message. This is a polyalphabetic substitution, meaning that letters in the plain text can turn out in a different cipher text letter each time it is enciphered. For example, if the plain text word was pizza, then the ciphertext would look something like this. 
As you can see, even though the plain text has two Z's in it, the letter Z isn't enciphered in the same letter in the ciphertext. This is the type of Visioneer cipher is enciphered and deciphered with two keywords, cryptost and palimpsest. To decipher the ciphertext, first thing you do is take the first letter of the ciphertext, E. Then you go to the first row and go across until you find E. Then you go up and the first letter is B, as you can see in the plain text. For the second letter, M, you would go to the second row, find M, and go up. It is E, as in the second letter. You will continue this in this fashion all the way down and continue until you have finished the entire plain text. And that is how K1 and K2 are solved. Gillickley used a program on his computer to go through hundreds of possibilities to find the keys and decipher the message. K2 is deciphered in the same way, but the keywords are cryptos and abscissa. K3 is deciphered using a column transposition cipher. It is hard to say when K4 will be solved, but we are still trying. Someday we will be able to declare cryptos solved. The plain text of K1 reads, Between subtle shading and the absence of light lies the nuance of occlusion. K1 is the shortest out of the three solved parts. The plain text of K2 is longer and reads, It was totally invisible. How is that possible? They used the Earth's magnetic field. The information was gathered and transmitted underground to an unknown location. Does Langley know about this? They should. It's buried out there somewhere. Who knows the exact location? Only WW. This was his last message. 38 degrees 57 minutes 6.5 seconds north, 77 degrees 8 minutes 44 seconds west, layer 2. The last part of K2, which reads, 4 seconds west, layer 2, was first believed to be 4 seconds west, ID by Rose. Jim Sanborn announced the unintentional mistake in 2006. However, the correction has not led to any new help with K4. The plain text of K3 is, Slowly, desperately slowly, the remains of passage debris that encumbered the lower part of the doorway was removed. With trembling hands, I made a tiny breach in the upper left-hand corner. And then, widening a hole a little, I inserted the candle and peered in. The hot air escaping from the chamber caused the flame to flicker, but presently details of the room within emerged from the mist. Can you see anything? Hi, my name is Harrison Claridge, and I've been studying the clues and solutions of cryptos for years. It is said the clues to solve K4 are within the solutions of K1, 2, and 3. In the solutions, Sanborn has told the public he has misspelled words on purpose and that it wasn't that what they are that is important, but rather their position and orientation. These misspellings could be clues. There are two different possible clues in K2. In the solution where it gives coordinates of latitude and longitude, it's thought to be a possible clue. According to Sanborn, they refer to the locations of the agency. Also where the plain text says, who knows the exact location, only WW. The letters WW are confirmed to be the initials of William Webster, the CIA director at the time Cryptos was installed. K3 is an interesting part of Cryptos, as it is a paraphrased quote from the book The Tomb of Tutankhamun that describes Howard Carter's account of opening the tomb in 1922. At the end of K3, there is a question which is, can you see anything? This is rumored to be a clue. In the book, the famous reply was, wonderful things. However, the actual field notes in 1922, the noted reply was, yes, it is wonderful. Hopefully we, hopefully we can figure out more about the possible clues to get a better lead on how to solve K4. Hello, ladies. Look at your man. Now back to me. Now back at your man. Now back to me. Sadly, he isn't me. But if he stopped using ladies scented body wash and switched to Old Spice, he could smell like he's me. Look down. Back up. Where are you? You're on a boat with the man your man could smell like. What's in your hand? Back at me. I have it. It's an oyster with two tickets to that thing you love. Look again. The tickets are now diamond. Anything is possible when your man smells like Old Spice and not a lady. I'm on a horse. K4 has been stumping experts and amateurs since its dedication. Sanborn himself has said that the fourth part is indeed solvable. However, he has said that even when this K4 is solved, the whole solution is a riddle, which can only be solved on the CAA grounds. There are theories and speculations about what this riddle might lead to. 
Some people believe it will lead to an item buried by Sanborn when the sculpture was being installed. Others believe that the riddle will have to deal with the Berlin Wall Monument at the headquarters, since the coordinates given in K2 differ from the monument's coordinates by only four seconds. Sanborn gave a hint to K4 in 2010 to mark the 20-year anniversary of cryptos. He gave the solution to six letters in the ciphertext. The 64th through the 69th ciphertext letters of K4 that read NYPVTT come out to be Berlin. Jim Sanborn, a Washington, D.C. sculptor who collaborated with a retired CIA cryptographer to concoct the conundrum. There are lots of doors to go through to get to the meaning of the code. And um, every time you enter, were to enter one doorway, you might, you know, in the distance see another doorway, and you go through that doorway, and then you go through another doorway. And, it's, and it unfolds as it's deciphered. Sanborn and Ed Scheidt are the only two that know the ciphers used to encrypt cryptos. William Webster is rumored to know a part of the secret, possibly the solution to K4, but not the entire riddle. No one is for sure what he knows. However, if Sanborn dies before he sees K4 solved, he has given explicit instructions to his girlfriend Jay and an extended family member of his on how to check if someone believes they solved K4. They do not know the solution. What they do know is the K4 test. If someone comes to one of them and they claim to have a solution, either Jay or the family member will ask them, for example, what the 38th letter is, or the 71st and the 89th letter. If the solver answers all the questions in the K4 test correctly, then the actual solution will be taken out of a safe to confirm it. If you do believe that you have solved the last part of Cryptos, you can submit your answer on a website owned by Jim Sanborn. This went online in 2010. Well, that concludes our special tonight on Cryptos, made possible by our sponsors, Applebee's and Old Spice. Now, for a sneak peek of our next week's episode, Famous Secrets, the mystery behind where David Brown gets all his funny jokes. A math professor at Ithaca College, David Brown's jokes have been the cause of a serious condition in his students. Laughing fits. There are many theories regarding where he gets his funny jokes from. Some believe he gets them from Laffy Taffy rappers. However, the most widely believed theory is actually that he was born with these jokes in his memory. What part of your body has the most rhythm? Your eardrums! Ah! <laughs>